Roger that. And uh, Hercules is moving off well away from the ship and just about to pass the transom. Roger. Roger. Away. Hercules is dive, dive, dive. Say it, say it. Hercules is dive, dive, dive. Very nicely done. <laughs> That's the way we roll up here. Oh no, one of the missiles is going backwards. <laughs> I don't know how many OCD, but <coughs> drives me crazy. This is an audio slate for Dive Hotel 1957. Bark at 415 at 60. Mark. Hercules doesn't dive too well when you have auto depth on.
AC ground faults are 40. Hello, everybody listening at home. Welcome to the next dive of the expedition. This is dive number 1957. We are diving on an unnamed seamount number five, approximately 220 miles north northwest of Palmyra Atoll. So this is outside the Marine National Monument zone, but it is within the exclusive economic zone of the EEZ. So we dived this feature earlier this morning. We're hoping to get to a maximum depth at around 1,986 meters. Um, and this, re or this area was kind of chosen because it has some interesting features. So Band since we are going down. I'll stop at five zero meters. Ready for control. Five zero meters, ready for control up here. Control sent. Roger. Oh, she doesn't have it on. All right, so. If we can go around the van and everybody say who you are and your favorite holiday. So I am Katie Doyle. I am lead science communication or lead science communication fellow. And my favorite holiday is tax day. Ren, set that because to nobody uh, celebrates whatever tax day. my so utility is. So when you go out and you have a fun time on tax day, can pull up your utility it's just page a glorious there. time. Plus, like if you um, did, like if you allocated enough throughout the year, so here. many times, like you get a nice little check back. And I'm like, yes, I love me some tax day. Corley, what about you? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Corley Rodriguez. I am a and graduate student uh, at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate I School of Oceanography. to the seabed. Blazing speed of um, meters a minute. I'm like literally looking up all of the holidays that there <laughs> are. Um, I thought you were going to say VJ Day. No. Not definitely, def definitely not that one. Um, Victory in Japan Day, celebrated in New Jersey. No. Rhode Island. Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Uh, not that one. Um, oh, I actually really like Pi Day. Too fast, Ren. Way too fast. Like National You're Pi Day? No, the... Uh, oh, like the chemistry. Oh, March, oh, sorry. March not fast uh, 14th. Faster, faster. 3.1415. Oh, Ren, away from you. Two... Six. Can you choose that as your favorite uh, holiday if you just read about it online, though? No, I know about Pi Day. I literally have a post from 2015 when I posted at, I posted on March uh, 14th of 2015 mm -hmm. at, like, the, like, it was, like, what is the next number? Four, at, like, 4 p.m. or something like that. I don't know. So I posted okay. it exactly at the time. I got it as far, as many decimal points out as I down. could. If you go back on my Facebook, like you can see that. Minute, right? so Other than <laughs> how do you celebrate it besides like 30 first? meters a minute? Um, well, you eat pie. Also, <laughs> I don't know. You do a math problem. <laughs> Soak a toe or something. I don't know. Um, other than that, I really like Thanksgiving. Um, because you're in the red, you get to eat a lot of food. You get to hang out with your family. And you don't have to buy presents. Which would probably be Christmas if I didn't have to buy presents. But buying presents gives me anxiety. So. Yes. Yes, I am right there with you. I try to find reasons to not go to Christmas. Or maybe you like March 29th, which is Smoke and Mirrors Day. What? Or March 30th, which is Take a Walk in the Park Day. I don't know if I believe in all these holidays. <laughs> all right, Brian, what about you? Um, good afternoon or good evening from the ship, everyone. I'm Brian Kennedy. I'm a deep sea benthic uh, ecologist, uh, and I am the watch lead for the four to eight. And I will have to say July fourth because I like explosions. Oh, and that one's coming up. And one interesting note. It's kind of cool. You can see we're kind of going through it. Looks like. Oh no, that's probably the. I don't know actually what I'm looking at. This there's a shimmer. If you look at Herc yeah. Main HD, there's a shimmer. Um, which we generally associate with hard thermoclines or mixing of different water masses. So if there was 
say some fresh water in the bio boxes we might get we could be what we were seeing or something or we're crossing through a, a pretty heavy thermocline here and i'm watching the thing and it does look like we just yeah. went through a pretty good thermocline um at the looking at the herc water temperature we're dropping pretty quick we went from about 28 celsius to 20 degrees celsius almost instantaneously so oh. that's probably that shimmer we were just seeing is we brought down hot surface water with the vehicle and just punched into much cooler um, lower water, deeper water, as we press through um, 140, 130 meters. Oh, that's cool. I have never heard that before. Science. Did you say what your favorite holiday was? July 4th, explosions. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, Chris, what about you? Well... Uh, yeah, hello everybody. I'm Chris. I am a data logger here on the Nautilus. Uh, I don't know, walk in the park day sounds pretty nice. I <laughs> like but I think my favorite holiday, I don't know if it counts as a holiday, but I really like the, the solstice. That's Which one? Winter or summer? Well, I like the summer one because it's near my birthday, but mm. the winter one's pretty cool too. But the solstices, I think, are my favorite holiday. When's your birthday? Ooh. June 19th. Oh, that's right, when we got off the ship. No cake. Uh, and you're a Gemini. You missed yep. the cut for a cancer. Yep, right on the cusp. So, Deb, what about you? What's your favorite holiday? Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Hello. We're talking about holidays? Yes. Uh, so who you are and your favorite holiday. Uh, my name's Deb Smith. I do nothing in this van. <laughs> But she does all but, the work. But come and visit. All the work was <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> no, uh, I'm here on Nautilus as a mapping coordinator. So I work with the navigator slash mapping team to um, map the seafloor. And um, yeah, so my favorite holiday is, I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite holiday. I like 4th of July. I like fireworks. Oh, I got two for 4th of July. Tick, tick. Oh my gosh, May 5th is no pants day. <laughs> oh my Do God. you wear shorts, I yeah. hope? <laughs> A skirt? May 9th, or yeah, May 9th is Lost Sock Memorial Day. Wait, say that again. Lost Sock Memorial Day. Lost Sock. That's what every day when you do laundry. Uh, on May 9th. Oh, Lost Sock. Oh, that's a cool one. Oh, oh wait. Today probably, what's today's date? The 29th? Mm. Today is put a pillow on your fridge day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but okay. All right, so Daryl, what is your favorite holiday and who are you? Tell us about Daryl. Hello, I'm Daryl Talak. I'm the video intern. Currently trying to figure out things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite holiday is probably, I don't know, Christmas time, because I like the snow the atmosphere of everything, but I get tired of Christmas music within the first two months. <laughs> but I love the season. So if you're watching her camera yeah, moving through a layer of tinafores, it looks like, oh. and a real dense, dense aggregation here of something gelatinous. I'm assuming it's the tinafore that could be, oh, there was oh. a squid. Um, so we're at 220 meters, which this is very likely, it could be, eh, it's a little early still. Um, but this could be the deep scattering layer starting to ascend um, to time a, an arrival in the surface waters with sunset. Uh, I would have assumed this was a little early, but Ooh. given how dense this layer is, that's kind of my guess. There's so many. Oh, wow. It's a tinafore parade. And it's a whole bunch of different things. There's siphonophores in there. There's tinafores. There's a couple of scyphozoan true jellies, it looks like. And a squid. And a squid. Yep. So yeah, this is probably the leading edge of the deep scattering layer coming up um, from the deep as the as it gets late in the day here, ship time. <laughs> All right, Lynette, we're tossing it down to you. I know it's your favorite time of the night. All right, what's the question? <laughs> Tell us about yourself and what is your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? And aside, while well, you have some time to think, October 4th is Tina Four Day. Whoa. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, 
Hey everyone, I'm Lynette. I am the navigator, so I just try to get us where we're trying to go, pretty much. <laughs> Lynette drives the ship. Um, not really. <laughs> I, I ask the people who drive the ship to move in specific directions. It's pretty much my job. Um, favorite holiday? I don't know. Um, maybe Halloween? Ooh, nobody said Halloween yet. I like Halloween a lot. Yeah, me too. I like dressing up. What's the favorite thing that you've dressed up as, Lynette? Just when you thought it was safe to go up SPL. <laughs> I'm bringing you right back in. Favorite thing. Oh my gosh. Um, that you have dressed up as. <laughs> I really don't know. I... I was a bunch of grapes once. Oh, were you really? I was too. <laughs> what? I'm dead serious. I. It was my mom's. Okay, it's so yeah, funny. That was my mom's idea too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did you do your grape costume? It was like a bunch of balloons. Oh. Like like purple balloons all kind of taped yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. Like pinned all over a sweater, and it was like you know Halloween in Wisconsin. It's like 10 degrees outside, Ooh. so you're like freezing to death. Ooh. But, I yeah, you couldn't put a winter jacket over that. It didn't <laughs> work. <laughs> so my mom had this old grape costume from, like, back in the 60s when she was growing up. And it was, like, handmade out of fabric. What? It was so cool. And I guess because it had spent so much time being made, like, she won all the costume contests when she wore it when she was a kid. And yeah. then she was like, uh, I'm not going to make you a Halloween costume this year. So I wore her old one and I won all the costume contests and I was really sad. Like I was, as a kid, I was like, I'm going to make my kid do this one too. <laughs> and then I saw it, like it's still around my parents' house, but it has been sitting kind of like outside in a shed kind of uh, thing. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Not in the best shape anymore. No, no. I'm like, my bunch of grapes oh, is now looking like raisins. So. That's too bad. Yeah. But I love that. Were you of the generation where like, you just had, you put on a pair of like colored leggings and then you just like kind of created a costume around it. Yeah, that's pretty much how this costume was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that a lot with cardboard boxes. Cause oh, yeah. you could go down to like a store and be like, do you have any old cardboard boxes? Mm -hmm. So I was a Rubik's cube, a domino. Oh, a that's great. Rubik's cube. Yes. Like every year, like it was just so fun. Like you get to make your own costume and it didn't cost very much. Yeah. So. I, for a solid three years in a row, it was just cardboard box costumes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yes. Okay, so first one. So tossing it over to Ren. Ren, what is your favorite hollow or what is your favorite holiday? I almost said Halloween. I think I gotta go with Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> favorite costume? Last Halloween I dressed up as a wizard. What kind of wizard? Yeah, it was like Harry Potter wizard, Merlin wizard. Uh, I had a fuzzy bathrobe and a really pointy hat. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Merlin wizard. I don't think I've ever dressed up as a wizard before. I have as a witch. Next year's Halloween costume idea. Some people think that's the same thing. Yeah, I'll go with it. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 30th, is my bucket's got a whole day. <laughs> I love it. So for those online, uh, we do, we are aware of the issue. We are working on it right now. You are welcome to look at the quad screen, and that should hopefully help um, you be able to view the dive. But yes, we are working on it. Okay, and then Wednesday is Macaroon Day, not to be confused with Macaron Day, which Ren can't eat macarons, but I think you can eat macaroons. Let me look. I don't really know the difference, to be honest. <laughs> so macaroons are... Wait. But thank you, though. What happened? Not 
macaroons are coconut and they're made with sweet and condensed milk, egg whites, and shredded coconut. I think there has to be some sort of other thing too. Are you looking up the difference between macaroons and macarons? And macarons. Macarons, yeah. Uh, M-A-C-R-O-N-S. Oh no, that's literally it. It's just shredded coconut, sweet and condensed milk, vanilla extract, and egg whites. Whereas some people put flour in their macaroons. I'm okay with that. I think they're so delicious, like they're light and fluffy. But I like the ones without. <laughs> macarons have almond flour. I also Wait. like French macaroons, which is an almond paste. We base. were talking about that earlier, because we're not going to name free. who, but somebody is allergic to almonds. But yes, have nuts in them. Like the like these, th yeah, this is what you're macarons. talking about? Yeah. Yes, those are macaroons, French. Um, I've always wanted to try like a really good one. So even when I was in the Paris airport, I wanted to buy one and I didn't get a chance. I've had them, but they're like from your local grocery store. Yeah. So they're all right, but those. yeah, I was like, Mom, I don't understand the big deal with them. I got a uh, macarons from a McDonald's in France at a gas station and um, they were really, really good. <laughs> You know what, I can't, like, gas station food is sometimes underrated. Like the 7-Eleven in Hawaii, mm -hmm. we had one of those little, um, I don't know what it's really. Yes, oh, so good. And it came from a 7-Eleven gas station. The, I think they also have some special stuff at the Hawaiian McDonald's too. I think it's like Spam or something. Yeah. I don't know what it is exactly. I've never been to McDonald's in Hawaii. But I've heard. I got to go to the very first McDonald's ever in Russia. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny because like, um, I don't know what the name of the character is, but remember like the old early 1990s, 1980s, like characters, there was one that was a shake and they had a dude dressed up as a shake costume standing outside of St. Petersburg of their McDonald's and it like, he looked mean. He looked like a really mean shake. I did not go eat McDonald's like that day. Like a shake that you drink? Yeah, like a, um, I don't know, what are those old school McDonald's characters? Like there was Grimace, the Hamburglers. Oh, yeah. What? McDonald's. I don't remember this. They were like, I was itty, itty, bitty when these were coming out. So yeah, okay, McDonald's characters. There's Grimace, the purple monster. Uh, Officer Big Mac, who was oh always gosh. chasing the Hamburglar. What is this? Carly, you've never seen these? No, this is a cartoon? <laughs> no, this they is were just the McDonald's advertisement I group can't get on for the McDonald's. Still cam because, oh, wait, actually, I, th I just remembered. I and then I don't them. remember the birdie person, though. Grimace, McDonald, Hamburglar. There was chicken nugget ones, too. I don't, I remember Hamburglar, but. I don't remember Mayor Big Mac, but he seems really cool. I do remember like the little chicken nugget ones. Okay. Oh my gosh. And there was a... Man. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Okay. See the little chicken nugget kind oh, of characters? Oh, wow. They look like childhood. the Pac-Man. Yeah, they look like the Pac-Man creatures come to life. The only ones I remember was this one, this one, this one. May. I remember her. And I for those of you at home who can't see the picture, <laughs> it's, it's like the Tweety Bird type something bird. What is? Probably. They said her name is like Bird. Early Bird. Birdie. It's birdie. literally Birdie. Hmm. Oh, so there's Mayor McCheese and Officer Big Mac. Fry Kids. I McNuggets. I love the McNuggets. I remember those so much. I don't remember Captain Crook. Ones. I don't either. I think that was... That was a swing and a miss. I don't remember Grimace with a selfie stick either. I think people <laughs> have taken some liberties. I don't think selfie sticks existed when Grimace did. I was like, is this one of those Times Square kind of things? Like, pay me one dollar and you can take a photo with Grimace. Oh, probably. Aimed at millennials. 
Yeah, that definitely looks like a Times Square grimace thing. Hmm. So, Yay. what are people saying? Anybody wants to chit chat at home? Uh, just about Hawaii Taco Bell, which I am a yeah. massive Taco Bell fan. I have gone through the Taco Bell in Honolulu, actually. It, and they do have. They've got some other stuff. options. Yeah. Oh, I am a massive Taco Bell fan. I even have like a Taco Bell shirt. One of my weird, so you know how people have like a, this is my bucket list kind of items. I have a regular bucket list and then I have like a crazy bucket list. So on my crazy bucket list is going to the Taco Bell test kitchen out in California and like getting to be one of their testers. <laughs> test kitchen for Taco Bell. I want to do it. I like, feel like I've seen like a video of people doing that, being like test kitchens for different Yes. Thanks. All right, ladies. Ner her we can do a Nautilus reunion <laughs> and a test kitchen somewhere. Yes. Oh, we're any in. any test kitchen. Well, not any test kitchen. <laughs> we have we have standards. <laughs> Taco Bell is definitely in my standards. Taco Bell. I'm not sure that I would attend a Taco Bell <laughs> test kitchen. W which one will you attend? I don't know. McDonald's. If the only if the characters are there. KFC. No. Mm. See, like it gets tricky Chick with me. Uh, no. Chipotle? Chipotle, I'm in. Okay. I love Chipotle. Chipotle, <laughs> we're ready to... <laughs> test kitchen test. you up. Yeah. So, Corley, which ones would you want to go to? I would go to all of them. I'm like, once in a lifetime to go try out a test kitchen? Heck yes, I'm in. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for that. Um... I feel like you could also just say that you're going to pick one thing that you can find at all of them, like go on like a French fry oh. expedition where you... Try Identify the, the all of them. yeah. I could do that. Sort of like wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Did you? Were you listening to our conversation earlier about this? No. <laughs> this well. is what happens on ships, though. You don't even listen to conversations, and they cycle back. They I think do, eight people do. talked about bingo the other day, <gasps> and I nobody love me overheard some bingo. them. Okay, we're not talking about bingo. Why? Sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> oh, no Chipotle huge, in Hawaii. Okay, no. Bingo is a massive thing in Corpus. We have a whole bingo center, multiple bingo lands. And there's like, okay, so there's one, it's like a shopping center and they have morning bingo, daytime bingo, evening bingo, <laughs> and midnight bingo. And, and I only um, have bingo in Rhode Island at the casinos. It's oh, not. no, this is like- Wait, really? Well, I mean, you can, I think they have it at like, maybe community centers and stuff, but I played Rhode it Island's a, pretty I played tight with the whole gambling once. thing. Huh? I played it at a distillery once. Oh, maybe, like, uh, like it was like kind of like a trivia type of deal. Yeah. I know yeah. Chris's it's business like establishment does bingo nights. Yeah. It's just kind of. Yeah. Um, best bingo I ever went to is this. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to go to Maine for the summers. And Casco, Maine had a like kind of summer center of town like festival party Ooh. thing. And they had a big bingo hall. And you yes. could play it with beans. They had little like. They gave you dried, like, beans. That's so fun. That's how I play Loteria. Oh, Loteria. Beans. Yeah. I just played Loteria, uh, like, a week before I got here. I it love that so game. It was so fun. That game is super fun. Yeah, it is. But anyway, so bingo and Loteria. Mm -hmm. Amazing. They're and pretty much is, the same thing. Yes, essentially, yeah. Except with pictures instead of numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, like, a huge deal in Corpus to play those games. And it's essentially legalized gambling, but the way it's worked into where it's Do you legal, win money? Is that the thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's massive cash prizes, like $500, $1,000. Do you pay in to play? Yes. Okay. So it's like um, every every place has a different thing, but the last one I played at, I think it was like $20 per game. And then, oh, it's just so fun. And then they have like fast bingo, and then they have all the different types. Yeah, I'm a massive bingo fan. And then now you can, like, if you are very serious, they have bingo computers to where you can play, like, 20 bingo cards at once, and they give you a little computer, and then you just type in B, 12, and then it goes across all 20 bingo cards all at once. That's yeah, cheating. I think I've never done the computer because I'm kind of with you. I'm like, mm, I'm not that serious about Man. it. Man, if, if you can run 20 cards, you, you're good, but if you need a computer to do it, <laughs> that's, you, like, lost the whole point of bingo there. 
I went out to this one bingo hall in Rockport with my family, and like two of my cousins were with us, very young. I think they were four and five or something. So Christy, if you're listening, I'm talking about your boys. And I'm used to like bingo, you know, at community centers. And this was one of my first times doing it very seriously. We got shh all night long. I was very concerned that we were gonna get kicked out. And I miss it, I love bingo. Okay, I don't think I'd ever hear someone say kicked out and of bingo a bingo hall in the same sense. It's intense, it is so intense. Those Man, you haven't lived till you've been kicked out I of bingo. Know. Let me tell you about when I got kicked out of bingo. That one time at bingo? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. There was a bingo hall up in Austin, so when I was going to school. <laughs> we got to change the subject. Okay. <laughs> we've talked we 20 can. minutes about bingo. I love me some bingo. I gotta get that. <laughs> I used to wear 80s prom dresses to the bingo hall in Austin. Man, oh. I'm sure you rocked it. I 100% did. Okay, so going back to McDonald's, though, uh, a viewer said that apparently Grimace has an Irish uncle uncle named Uncle O'Grimacy. Mm. And I'm like, this sounds like that beautiful 1980s creativity full force. Do we answer the how long till the bottom? Oh, uh, no. Lynette, can you tell us how long until the bottom? Uh, instruments on my end indicate 56 minutes. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Perfect, Ren. Yeah. <laughs> I try. <laughs> and so for those who missed the announcement earlier, yes, we are aware that there is some streaming issues. If you go to the quad, uh, you should not have any issues whatsoever, but it is an issue that is being worked on. So, Deb, would you like to be our weather girl? What are our current weather conditions? Got no clue. Outside, it's sunny at the moment. <laughs> First time in multiple days. I usually am in the data lab. They don't let us outside very often. Well. I'm like, go back to your cave, Deb. <laughs> this is a different sort of cave, much darker. I have a window in my room, at least. <laughs> yes, everybody at home, we know channel yeah. one and channel three are down. But, as Katie said, you can get it on the quad. <laughs> that was beautiful, Deb. Can you see my anchor trip Oh. We like having fun up here in the van. Welcome to customer support. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, another viewer saying that there's no Chipotle in Hawaii, so we could not do a test kitchen there. Nope. But, I mean, if Chipotle wants to fly us out to anywhere where the test kitchen is... We will 100% do that. We're in on it. We on will it. work. We will work with you, Chipotle. Everyone or Taco will. Bell, if Everyone you're listening. Will come. Really just anywhere. We will fly out to any test kitchen. Yes. Maybe not Deb, but me and Coralie. Well, no, Deb's going to come along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Just not going to go into the actual test kitchen. No, I'm in for a Chipotle test kitchen. That's, I think, what the common common kitchen we all came to the agreement with was Chipotle. Yeah. I don't even know where the test kitchen is. I don't either. I'll we'll figure it out. I mean, if they don't have one, they could create one for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Could they do, like, could a fast food restaurant do a Nautilus-inspired menu? What would be on it? <laughs> um, I mean, the burritos kind of look like sea cucumbers. <laughs> they kind of, oh, that would be a good one. And then, you know, like when they wrap it really poorly, yeah. so you like go to eat the burrito and all the rice falls out. It's like when, <laughs> it's like when <laughs> the cucumber's done cleaning poorly. the <laughs> You had a totally different take. I was thinking like our actual kitchen look. Pizza with corn. I know. Uh, quesadillas for breakfast. Oh, 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 I'm thinking about like actual Chipotle, like being like, this yeah. isn't a burrito, you're eating a sea <laughs> cucumber. <laughs> we should show everybody that gorgeous sunset that's happening outside. Oh, yeah. oh, do we have our smiley face again? Thank you, Deck Chief Mike. Oh, and there's a, Wait, there's there's a, tongue, a tongue, there's a tongue. <laughs> I love As you that. can see, it doesn't take much to get us excited. <laughs> 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 Wait through a 30 day cruise. 
But we haven't had a blue yeah, water dive this whole ex expedition on this watch. So it is very exciting. Maybe give the front row a break. Yeah. There's your live feed for everyone. Aww. So earlier today, everybody, we had a knot tying class from Deck Chief Mike. And you can see one of the, I don't remember what that bundle is called where you properly tie it together. But we got to tie that up. I don't know who, but somebody tied that together. What it's is that one called? of the, um, it's one of the lines used as a tagline on Atalanta. Oh. But it's coiled. Do you remember what the coil is called? Were you... Is it a coil? No, like remember he had a specific name for it. Brian to the rescue? Coil and gasket. Coil and gasket. gasket. Huh, I learned something new today. <laughs> I like was not a... making it to <laughs> to uh, not tying class. I wanted to, but I lost track of time. Me, yeah, I'm like, it's a rope. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a line. It's a line. No ropes on boats. Oh, what is that? Rope? That's luck? awesome. No there's, ropes on there's boats. There's one rope on a boat. It's the ship's bell. Yeah. Has a rope. Uh, oh. Everyone otherwise, they're all line. lines. Yep. Okay. I feel like I should have learned this when I took sailing camp. I thought yeah, it I was also a probably should have re re remembered the <laughs> bow and knot. <laughs> I thought it leave. was a rope until it has a job, and then it then it is a line. Oh, a rope oh, until it. Oh, oh, that. A rope is just an unemployed line. I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I just get in the safe zone of there's, there's no, no ropes, ropes on a boat. boat. <laughs> Apparently, except for the bell. Sort of like there. This is a ship and not a boat. Yes, indeed. I had 30 minutes of training at National Geographic headquarters where we went over that. What? But we can call it a vessel. Yes. What's the, what's the difference? Semantics. Enter Brian. Yeah, uh, Brian. I, I don't remember the <laughs> exact Boats can definition. go on ships. Yes. That's but the, ships don't go on boats. That's the, that's the mnemonic I always use. Oh, uh, okay. So, so you like can have a work boat. Oh. B but you don't have a work ship like okay. that. Like, But this is a ship. So if a vessel can carry a boat... It's a ship. Okay, but what if another vessel okay. could carry this boat? Like the a container ship. Yeah. Still a ship. Oh, but yeah, okay, still a ship. Not a boat. But what if... Could we wait. do like a turducken <laughs> kind of approach? Yeah, like... Like John boat, offshore boat, Nautilus, container ship. Still ships. Except for the John boat, which is a boat, which, which is, boat. is on another boat ship. Hence the name John boat. <laughs> Can you so. call boats vessels? Yes. 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 So you can call anything a vessel. Yes. Okay. So if you've never looked up a heavy lift ship, mm. that's something that's worth a Google. Um, there ship, are ships that ships. yep, ship okay. shipping ships. I ship will. Shipping ships. Um, they come into they like Newport, amazing. Rhode Island every year and drop off all the mega yachts and super yacht sailboats and. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, ship I need shipping to ships. be there and meet those people. I'm not getting anything other no, than No, heavy lift. Heavy lift. Yeah, I'm like ship should be in ships. Um, yeah, I typed it in. <laughs> it is. Heavy, heavy lift. Cargo. Like oh, that. one of those. Or they, they're like floating dry docks. So they go down and they put a bunch of ships yes, on them. Yes, 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 yes. We get these in. Um, Same thing with this. Yeah. Okay. This is crazy. It looks like it's trying to get sunk. I love wait, these things. It is. It is. Yeah, wait. They 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 work like a floating dry dock where they take on water and they sink down and then they float the ship on. Some have giant cranes and they crane ships on, but some work like a dry dock where or like a floating dock. But then how yes. do they? I didn't realize they had so. So many they have uses. blocks underneath all the boats, and then they come in and they place them in place and then they drain all the water out and the boat comes up and they're on, like. Uh, Oh, there it is. Settling blocks. And some of these are huge. Like, they can take U.S. Navy frigates. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen them take out oil platforms. Or rigs, yep. Yeah. yeah. I've seen some that had all of the, like, um, parts and pieces of a wind turbine system. We get those a lot because there's a lot of uh, wind turbines being built. Mm -hmm. This is cool. But I still think my favorite ship is a flip, flip ship. Flip from Scripps. I I've will seen take flip a Google in the harbor. search in that. Flip ship. Just flip. I think it's a, I don't know if it's an RV flip 
RV flip research vessel. Nope, Scripps, no, Scripps. Uh, Scripps Institute in California. It's in San Diego. But I do like the flip that they're showing me here. <laughs> <laughs> you got flip flops, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try flip ship. And say RV flip ship. RV? RV, like research, research vessel. Research vessel. Flip is the name of the ship. Oh no, not RP. Why Google? Don't change this on me. Flip in it. action. F L I P. It's an acronym for a floating laboratory inversion platform or something like that. That sounds right to me. Whoa! How is this? I feel like I'm watching the laws of physics being broken in front of my eyes. Yeah, but the weird part is that everything they have is like 90 degrees. So they'll have like a toilet in one way, and then when the ship flips, they have the toilet like another way. Mm -hmm. So everything is mm -hmm. weird. So what are they? Okay. What is the purpose of it flipping? Like, what does it allow you to do that normal ships don't allow you to do? It's like a floating laboratory, but it allows you to have part of the laboratory be underwater and then the housing be above water. So you can do different experiments at out in the ocean with the essentially lower part of the vessel underwater. So can you like open up one of the portholes? Oh, that's funny. I wouldn't recommend it, you might sink. But you can up top. So each one of these fills up with water and then you can like collect the water from the different things. So is it good mm. for mesopelagic? I don't know, I've never been on it, but I think there might be a bit more on Wikipedia or something. Wikipedia to the rescue. And then how does it get all the water out? Does anyone know? They are usually pumped out. It's usually pumped out. Okay. Just like most ballast tanks, it's usually a pump. 55 feet on the platform, pointing out of the water. Hey, hey. Just wanted to mention they use flip for acoustic measurements because the bottom of it gets below the wave base, so it's quieter. Are you on SPL? Thanks, Adam. Oh, oh to okay, the rescue. On Yay. Adam, you want to give us some more fun facts about flip? Have you ever been on flip? Tell us about the toilet on flip. Uh, no, I've never been on flip, but I've, you know, been in port next to it. Um, I'm not sure it gets used all that much anymore, but no. from what I heard, you guys gave the highlights, which is the toilet changing direction. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the toilet gets a lot of talk. <laughs> it's really cool. Like the photo that you just showed me was amazing. Yeah. Everyone can go look up. You literally just search flip RV ship flip. interior. Mm -hmm. If you just Google search that, it's you'll see the images. <laughs> and yes, for everybody watching, uh, smiley. <laughs> a few minutes there was a smiley face with the tongue out on the back deck. Thank you, Deck Chief Mike. <laughs> So the very first Chipotle was n in Denver. Denver? Denver. Yeah. What? I'm a little surprised by that, too. Yeah. Well, well you know. I would have figured. Not, it's not going down that rabbit okay. hole. Okay. <laughs> but one of our viewers is like, if we come visit, he will pay for the guacamole on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those are big dollars. Yeah. <laughs> big dollars. Oh. The queso cheese and the guacamole side, man, that's like more than the burrito it costs itself. I'll only go if you're also getting the tortilla chips. And queso. <laughs> if, you, the queso. if you're getting all three, you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> Stranger <laughs> online. <laughs> so Nautilus-inspired menu would be Krabby Patties. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, other things. I really like my... Chipotle making a, making sea, a cucumber sea cucumber burrito where the rice falls out. I think when you just start okay. saying sea cucumber burrito, I'm out. <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you've tried it. I mean, maybe if it was the Holotherian burrito. Oh, no. Nah. Sea cucumber just has a better ring. I know. And then the surprise. Today we get into port. June 14th, not July 14th. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying right. until July. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're totally right. We're only here for one month, not two months. If you'd like to stay, I'm sure they'd be happy to have you on the transit <laughs> to Canada, but. 
No, I've never, I almost said I've never been to Canada, but I have. <laughs> I've never been to Canada. I've only been once, actually, so. I've only been once, too. Yeah, went but to a... I, I've only been to Vancouver. Where are they going? Um, British Columbia. Vancouver or Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to Montreal. I went up. Uh, oh, yeah, it's yeah, so no, close Quebec. to us. I went to Quebec. Uh, Not Montreal. I really want to go. Well, For a conference. Quebec Hydro. City or Quebec's a province? Quebec City. Okay. I have been to Canada more times than I've been to Mexico, and I live two hours north of the Mexican border. That doesn't make any sense to me. Makes 100% <laughs> <laughs> sense <laughs> Why? You're so close to Mexico. I would go down all the time. I thought you didn't like the cold. Me? No. Oh. Katie. I don't like the cold. I seriously do not, but I just feel like there's more opportunities to go to Canada. Mm. I've never been to Western Canada. I think that'd be nice. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, like the Vancouver, yeah, British Columbia. Yeah, it's it's super beautiful. It's really pretty. I will say they are not nice there. I was <laughs> really? told. I was told Can Canadians this, Canadians that. They're the nicest people. These people were very rude. I feel like honestly, you must have had a bad queens. experience. I I have met a lot of nice Canadians. No, I but do, so yeah. I actually like. Then I uh, at one of my jobs, I was telling there's some people at a training. Um, who are from Canada, and I was telling them, like, you know, you guys get this rep for being so nice and all this stuff, and they're like, yeah, we, we and they were very nice, and mm -hmm. uh, they're like, well, where did you go? And I said Vancouver, and they're like, well, that's why, like, Vancouver is, like, the one place in Canada where everyone is super, super mean. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, okay. So one of my best friends is Canadian, and she said that Canadians are not actually nice. They're just extremely passive aggressive. <laughs> so they come off as being very kind, but. <laughs> well, different areas. Yeah, I will agree. I think every place has a reputation for being good and bad in different yes, places. Yes, so. yeah. We're not trying to single you out, Canada. No, no. Oh, so question, what's everybody's favorite kind of shark? Mm, I like the six gills. Oh, they are very cool. Mainly because it means we're diving deep. Yeah. I like whale sharks. Well, yeah, those two. They're so They're cute. They're super awesome. Or chimera. Oh, Go those shark. are, yeah, very neat. Brian, Chris, favorite shark? I'm thinking. I don't think I've ever considered that question before. Um, I really like the sand tigers. They're they're so chill and so scary looking at the same time. Um, and then I kind of like the Greenland sharks when we see them oh. down here. They're pretty cool. Yeah, that's a great one. Chris, uh, what do you think? What's your favorite type? Well, I just recently saw my first hammerhead. Ooh, a ago. Mm, that's and right. That is, uh, they're. they're Pretty amazing animals. I think they're really weird looking, but they're so beautiful watching them move. Uh, I like them. I took my niece swimming at the pool at URI, and she told mm. me that it looked like a hammerhead shark, with the black <laughs> swim lane line that ends with a T. I was like, where did, you're five. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> the scare going like, in the pool? Yeah. Well, she was like, well, there's a shark in here, and it's a hammerhead. And I was like, okay, right there. And I'm like, nope. But that's a great imagination. <laughs> Ren, what's your favorite kind of shark? I gotta go with oceanic white tips. I've uh, swam with them in blue water before, and they're very cool. See, Ren's going uh, yeah, overboard if right. we can. Ren, are you gonna jump overboard? <laughs> if they gave me the opportunity, I absolutely would. <laughs> He's on the yes category. I feel okay, like if Ren right. was there, I'd be more comfortable to do it because I feel like he'd punch the shark out or something if Wait, he needed to. Who? Ren. That's, oh, that's okay. how I avoided getting munched last time I was around them. <laughs> Good oh Lord. God. He's got experience. Okay. I'm going with swimming with just, just, yes. <laughs> just to be clear, I don't want anybody to go out harassing sharks, but yeah. sometimes when uh, I was with experienced uh, biologists and they gave me a pole spear and they said that the sharks yeah. got kind of frisky, you can just give them a little bit of a, no a little tap, tap just yeah. to yeah, show them that them you're, away. yeah, like show them you're not them. worth eating, that you're not prey. Lynette, favorite type of shark? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I guess I'm going to say black tip reef sharks because they're the only ones I've swam with. 
Very good. Yeah, I love it. So did we think we will be seeing any sharks today? I'm going to go with a no until maybe the ascent back up. And then we might see one. We've been seeing a white tip on almost every ascent at the tail end. Put it on your bingo card. Yeah. <laughs> We are kind of due. We haven't seen a. We've seen one like little dogfish, two <laughs> dogfish. Oh for, yeah, yeah, and, you're right. Uh, <laughs> Coralie, you've got an invitation to Vancouver for unlimited guacamole. Because they're <laughs> now nice that's, like that. that's a nice. That's someone nice from Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when I visited? <laughs> Her whole mindset has changed now in Vancouver. I do like the other person. Canadians are polite. There's a difference from nice. <laughs> <laughs> from an aggressively friendly <laughs> Australian. <laughs> Living in a van. That sounds like fun. Australians, I do. I feel like when I travel, I really like get along Enjoy with them. Australians. Yeah. yeah. The Australians and the Irish, I feel like I get along well with. British people, not so much. <laughs> I don't I think, think I've traveled anywhere depends. that I haven't really liked people. Oh. I mean, every place is just so different, you know? Everybody's got, you gotta like, this immerse is like back when I was like culture. staying in hostels, though. Well, that's, that's a um, experience all unto itself. Yeah. 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 And you have to put yourself in a mindset to do that type of traveling. Yeah. I do like that kind of traveling. You get to meet yeah. so many people. Interact with people you normally wouldn't interact open with. Open-minded for yeah. a lot of variety of people like and also, cultures yeah. and It forces you to be open-minded because you can't sleep in like a dorm-style hostel and yeah. hate people. Not get along with people. Yeah. I mean, you can. You can. Yeah. <laughs> but you're just that person that yeah. nobody else <laughs> wants to be around. Oh, the Australian person is living in Vancouver, not a van. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> living in van. Just read in the, uh. read in the script. <laughs> okay, I get it. I also really like the Australian accent. Yeah, people always say like it's like Kiwi one of the accent. top people, or it's one of the top accents in the world. It's like Australian. Mm -hmm. Australian, Irish, and then Deep South. Or some of they always say are some of the top five greatest accents. I'm gonna. That's yeah. because you're from Cali. <laughs> it is because you're from California. I think California is a great accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. I think all accents are unique. Yeah, I'm kind of a. Thanks, peacemaker, Deb. <laughs> where? Wait, Deb, where are you from? Are you from New England? You're okay. Yeah. Why is everyone from Rhode Island? I feel like I feel like everyone from Rhode Island because stays in Rhode Island. Because you go to the University of Rhode Island. <laughs> did you go to the University? No, uh, I did not go to the University. Because you went to Maine Mar I Maritime. Did, yeah. Um, but I feel like everyone I meet in Rhode Island, like some of them are like grad students and have like moved, but then everyone else is like from Rhode Island. It's this tiny little state we just get stuck in. Yeah. Laughing at Brian, shaking his head. <laughs> you got out. So are there any particular critters that you hope to see on this dive or anything at all that you would like to see? I haven't watched a lot of all the dives. I'm still hoping for a Dumbo that I happen to catch. They're still my favorite. They said uh, that they saw one on yesterday's dive, but what? it was just like a quick little flash. I mean, like I know were they sure that they saw one? That was kind of my thought. Like, because they said it was just a flash in, flash out kind of a thing. You need, like, highlight reel or it doesn't count in my book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, one time a Dumbo octopus, like, can't kind of swam with the ROV down, and I counted that because we were, like, we could see its mm -hmm. little ears or uh -huh. whatever. But, yeah. I don't know. All sorts of those, like, you know, really big strawberry squid is cool. Yeah. Or... Now confetti look squid. Strawberry squid. It kind of looks like a confetti Ooh, they squid. They look like strawberries. They have like little polka dots on them. They're very pretty. Aww. Come in different colors. 
One big eye, one small eye. Mm -hmm. Look at how cute Sometimes it is. they'll flash at you. Wow. And then there's the kind with the like really cool flashers. I like those squid are good too. You're just a cephalopod fan in general. True, true story. I've seen a baby squid, a baby octopus on a coral. Ooh. Aw. Itty bitty. It's just a baby. Oh, I like the strawberry squid mm -hmm. sticker. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I need one. It's like strawberry shortcake and a squid. I think I'm really hungry for dessert because I was like, mmm, that looks delicious. <laughs> strawberry oh. shortcake. I'm in. Mm -hmm. I love strawberry shortcake. It's summertime. There's this place in Oakland that has really good strawberry shortcake. It's called Lady Fingers. Ooh. Um, Do they put Lady oh, Fingers? Oh, and Bake Sale Betty's, which is also in Oakland, has really good. Um, That's a great name. Not for that a bakery. we're endorsing any particular no, product no. or place. <laughs> Wait, you mentioned that now after like our McDonald's, Taco Bell, Chipotle <laughs> thing? <laughs> oh, what I miss? Chipotle and Taco Bell. Oh, yeah, this was like an hour and a you half ago. You were working an yeah. hour and a half ago. Whoa. Oh, I guess it has. We were talking about um, working, going and being their test kitchen. I heard uh, that part. I just didn't hear the uh, backstory. That was that. the. Yeah. All the places. We we're trying to figure out which place we could all go, and we landed on Chipotle. Chipotle, Chipotle. Test kitchen. Okay, so somebody from who was watching last night said it was 100% a Dumbo, but it didn't show up on our still cams either. Yeah. Because, like, we already checked the feed. So and I didn't why didn't any anyone Dumbo. say anything? If it was 100% a Dumbo, I feel like I would have heard about it more today. I heard about it today. Oh. They did. They saw it. It was in the Argus camera, or the um, Atlanta camera, not in Herc. Oh, yeah, I heard that too, Atalanta. So you probably have to go dig through those videos. Mm. Now I want to go back and look back through it because we did, we do get the Argus or Atalanta feed. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. They probably just weren't quick enough to take a picture. Yeah, maybe. Who's on It'll watch? It'll be in the video. Oh. You can take a subset oh, yeah. from the video. Thank you for that person who said Taco Bell is the best option. Oh, just don't yes, get her started I'm again. Right there. Okay. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's the best. But it's, it's an I option. Have a, I it's have an definitely option. love. I love Taco Bell. Okay, but going back, so we don't digress anymore. Uh, so Deb wants to see a Dumbo, mm -hmm. any kind of cephalopod, mm -hmm. particularly a strawberry squid. Mm -hmm. Coralie, what would you like to see this dive? Um, I wouldn't mind seeing. Okay, also a side note, Squid and Cuttlefish, Cuttlefish Day is uh, October 10th. <laughs> it's really far away, Corley. I know, really but far away. just keeping in line with the holiday theme. Um, I wouldn't mind thinking about squids. I wouldn't mind seeing a confetti squid because that's what I dressed up Ooh. for for Halloween. Yes, you were the one that made me Google search that the other night. They're so pretty. So confetti squid. Brian, any particular hopes and dreams and aspirations for this dive? For megafauna, we I'd like to see a larger shark. We haven't seen any size shark yet this expedition uh, on the bottom. Um, like a six killer? Six kill, yeah. You Are there any other deep water sharks? Yeah, there's, like the there's several. I mean, you can see. I get I get my depth ranges confused on which ones are what depths and stuff like that. But yeah, six scale would be a short nose six scale would be the most likely candidate for a large shark at this depth down here. Um, so when we were working in the Phoenix Islands in 2017, we had came across two big six scales swimming next to each other, um, which was really cool. It was like a I don't know a 15 footer and like a 12 footer were just cruising right next to each other and they hung out with the ROV for a few minutes. Um, so I think I think we're due for something like that for this expedition. Uh, and other than that, I'm, I feel like my dive site picking abilities are a little in question because of the last couple dives. We haven't found nearly as many corals as I thought we were going to. So I'm questioning myself on where we pick dive sites. So I'm hoping this will have lots of corals and sponges. But we always find amazing stuff. A whale bone, a radiolarian, Cool. That's true. All authorians. All the cool stuff is always from our watch. Minus a Dumbo. All right, what about you, Chris? Hopes, dreams, aspirations, cool critters. So if we're going on, going big, I'd love to see a whale fall. 
Oh. You just raised the bar right there. <laughs> that was the right answer. Yes. Man, that would be the most amazing thing and a recently dead one. Oh, that would be so cool. But what would it be? I feel like it would have to be an orca because you said there's not that many whales out here. Oh, there, there's probably whales that go through. But yeah, there's plenty. It would be you, like a sperm yeah. whale or if a you think about a whale or Ooh, sperm whale. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty be, of whales okay, that transit through whale. here. And then there's a whole bunch of different types of beaked whales. There's, I forget, there's 40 or 50 species of beaked whales that everyone forgets about. Um, there's resident populations of melon-headed whales out here. There's all kinds of pilot whales. There's orcas. There's plenty of mid-sized tooth whales that would be are common in this part of the world. So you may not get a 100-foot blue whale or something, but... Uh, there's certainly plenty of marine mammals out here, and you can, you know, find tuna falls and stuff like that that have similar communities. Um, so any kind of big fish fall can generate a real deep sea biodiversity bloom wherever it lands, too. World Whale Day is on February 18th. <laughs> is there a whale fall day? Let me look. No. Okay. I'm slightly disappointed in that. I mean, there can't be a holiday for everything. everything. I feel like there kind of is, though. There's like peanut butter cookie, do cookie day, go fly a kite day. Earth rotation day. There you go. Which is January 8th. Um, ditch New Year's resolution day on January 17th. I feel like Ditch New Year's Resolution Day should be January 2nd. People need to try for at least like a couple weeks. You think so? Yeah. I feel like I always ditch mine pretty early on, so I don't even make them anymore. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't make yeah. them anymore. I want to, but I'm just like, no, nah, I'm gonna end up breaking this. Yeah, I never remember them anyways. I feel like so many times you make that resolution and then you just kind of like alter it slightly for Lent, like, cause growing up in a large Catholic community, like, yeah, Lent's a huge thing. And everybody would be like, so their New Year's resolution would be, I'm going to lose weight. And then for Lent, they'd just be like, I'm, I'm gonna giving give up, yeah, chocolate. I'm giving up chocolate yeah, every, every yeah. year. Every, I'm giving up sugar. I'm giving up fast food. I'm like, this is your New Year's resolution just slightly changed. I, I like went vegan for one Lent in high school, but then mostly like I gave up chocolate. Mm. Yeah, but I... I don't do anything anymore. I don't like to restrict myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so somebody online says that whale fall day should be the day after whale day. Yeah. That would be hilarious. Learn your name in Morse code day is January 11th. <laughs> oh, and marzipan day is January, oh. I do love me some marzipan. I just realized Ren can't have marzipan. Oh, that is a sad fact. Thanks for reminding me. Sorry. <laughs> it's I not, how it's you not just that like good. Blurt that out and I'm like, I know it's good. I've accidentally eaten allergic. some before. Oh, yeah. I was trying to keep it anonymous, Rin. Oh, I guess I just added myself. It's okay. The internet can know I'm allergic to almonds. <laughs> okay, so Rin, on that same, since we got you talking, what are your hopes, dreams, aspirations, cool critters you want to see from this dive? Ooh, uh, I don't know. Whatever makes the science team happy. Thanks, Ren. I appreciate the support. Very All diplomatic right. answer. That was like the most Miss America answer ever. I wish for world peace and happiness among the back row. Oh, okay. I will, hold on. Let me come up with a better one then. <laughs> <laughs> a whale fall would be pretty, pretty cool to see. Okay, so on that same line, are there places on the earth where whale falls happen more frequently, like an elephant graveyard except for whales? I don't know of any kind of social thing that would cause them to go to one place or another when they were not feeling well, but obviously anywhere with a higher density of whales would probably have a higher density of whale carcasses. So they're mostly uh, seen along migratory routes. I was going to say that migratory route from up the Canadian or up the Californian coast, I hear, is like a huge killing field for young whales. 
So it can't have been like that new because, okay. How long would, what, does it take a whale fall to sink though? I feel like it's so big, like fast, but then it's also like- Oh, they blow the, the, the There's yeah, like the I gases where it like flows. Several months. I, I even have I, a book called Whale Fall Cafe and it's really cute. I have to admit, like, I don't know much of anything about whale falls. Um, but I would assume it would be a matter of days to weeks for a, a carcass to get all the way down to the bottom. But I could be wrong about that. I got a text from my mom earlier today. She said that a, a gray whale was killed by some orcas off the Oregon coast Ooh. a little while ago, like a couple days ago. So is now it going to wash up or is it going to sink? Well, they're probably going to eat quite a bit of it. And then mm. the sharks will come and eat quite a bit eat of it. Eat some more. And yeah. then part of it will sink. I don't know how far out it was, but. Yeah, the only big whale carcass I've ever seen was a humpback, and it was very much floating and being chomped on by sharks. I've seen a humpback carcass, and I got to measure it, but it was already on land. And that was a different kind of smell, smell than I would, yeah, never, ever, ever would I wish anybody to have to smell a dead whale. It was awful. So Lynette, what do you hope to see this dive? Um, the seafloor. <laughs> Speaking uh -huh. of which, yeah. we We're should be about there, 200 yeah. meters above it. We're so close. Yay! I'd like to see just fields and fields of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like it's really easy to navigate when there's just fields and fields of sand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, play in the sand day is Friday, August 11th. Amazing. <laughs> Where Thank are you, you getting all of these? <laughs> I'm literally just searching sand day 2023. <laughs> Whale Day 2023. <laughs> Who's in the winch room? Who That's is this mystery person? That's TJ. He's uh, giving it a quick check before his watch begins to make sure everything's looking okay. Oh, yeah. There he is. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So uh, somebody online was saying that every time they think about dead whales, they think about the decades old dynamite, the dead whale. If you have not watched that on YouTube, everybody, please give it a look. Dead whale dynamite is from like the 60s or the 70s. That sounds terrible. Have you not seen it? I don't want to see it. Oh, uh, it's worth watching. It is. It's totally worth watching. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be good. I thought it was going to be gross and like, oh, I don't want to see this. This is morbid. It is just the overconfidence of the 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, dynamite, let's blow it up. I mean, they were doing a lot of that at that time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking about that video where it's like, oh no, the flipper landed on my car and it completely crushed my car. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. There it is. Deb, yeah. it's, you can watch it. It's right it's not, now? It's, yeah, yeah. Coralie. No, we're not allowed to watch video. Can you see it? It's already pre-downloaded. It's okay. I feel like you have to have sound, though. Oh, does it really need sound? Yes. Yeah, sound you is really good to get the full effect. I don't even know if we can hear this. Uh, no. Uh, so yes, anybody that's just now tuning in, uh, we know that 
the channel one video and three are not working. If you watch the quad, you will still be able to watch the dive. They are working on it from land and out here at sea. Okay, it's the aftermath of this that is so hilarious. Yes, instant karma. <laughs> and it just lands on their cars. So I have, since coming on SPL a couple of nights ago, I've definitely heard about the Seinfeld, George Costanza, beached whale with Kramer. I've never seen that episode, but I do like me some Seinfeld. <laughs> Just instant karma. I just love listening to them interview after the whale has exploded and crushed their cars. And just that sound of despair in their voice, like, oh, we messed up bad. Yeah. <laughs> but that site where they did it, it's now actually a park in Oregon called Dead Whale Park. Oh my God. Or Whale Explosion Park, something like that. Ooh, so here's a question for Deb. So Deb, so serious, crazy. serious question. Have you heard of the Robo Sub competition and do you think of smaller suitcase sized ROB, ROVs being used for ocean exploration? I have heard of Robo Sub. I'm not super familiar with it, but OECI just sponsored a Robo ROV competition, Ooh. Robo Nation ROV competition um, this year. And um, so I think it's going to be challenging on size. You know, the ocean has a lot of forces in it. Um, when you use small er ROVs, like work, like small ROVs that are subjected to a lot of current and other forces, um, it's harder to do. So ocean exploration, um, deep ocean exploration, no. Yeah, but, we got um, three beams and uh Argus is just getting there some is some altitude. use for it in shallower water um, like reef areas mm -hmm. and lakes and calmer places and a lot of places do have deep sea fairly close to their shores like if you think about the Pacific Islands that are out here there are a thousand meters you know within a mile of land what's that uh, sometimes so um, well Deb's absolutely correct you get heavy currents and whatnot that of uh, I think that so. the little vehicles can't handle. They don't have much of a sampling capability. They don't have much of a payload. Um, but the ability to put smaller, cheaper vehicles um, out in number oh. will allow lots of more observations uh, at a scale that we just can't match if we have to buy a $5 million RV and mobilize a 200-foot ship yes. 
yes. to handle it. So there's definitely a trade-off in capability to scale uh, and cost and ease of deployment. Which way is uphill? Okay. I've done a couple projects working um, in developing countries, um, deploying smaller RVs and cheaper drop cams um, in an attempt to be able to enable you, uh, countries that don't have access to, to research uh, vessels to still be able to do mesophotic and deep and deep core wow. uh, deep water work. Um, Something just from fishing boats and whatnot oh. that are available. Uh, uh, so it's a really interesting idea of can we do cheaper and deeper um, and enable deep sea science in places that currently can't really access it. To zero my tether ups. Yeah, I was going to tee that up to you, Brian. <laughs> 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 it's, yeah, it's a great project. I think um, all of these projects are great. It's getting, you know, design, engineering, resources and tools to students and um, I think it's broadening our ideas of what we can okay, actually can use uh, and do in, in various different places and environments here. and I think it's a great great um, I have great program drug great into thoughts quite a way so I need to, to let it swing back while we come down the outside last the box meters. yeah or outside the keep suitcase. coming down I'm doing about <laughs> 10 meters a minute there. that's one of those projects I've been working on for a couple of years in my classroom getting the sea perch technology or doing some kind of robotics. Mm -hmm. Sea perch? Uh, Did I hear you mention sea perch? Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been trying to get some sea perches for our school. I built them in high school. Yeah, that's kind of it. Like, I want that proje project to come down to Texas. And we do have a Naval Air Force Station right next to us. And I know the Navy is. Do you have an r to c program? So you on see yes, the hill coming in there. It is. National Champions, the actually. Sonar? Uh, so oh, for, or yeah, I mean, Sonar for high school. There, if so we for my program, for steep where I come from, it was a Navy we RTC, so we were able and to I get would the run over that way with program. Hercules. Yeah, I'm trying to get some, trying to get some funding for it. We tried going through the Navy, um, and there was some kind of weird stipulation okay, you that it didn't uh, work. Stop there for a minute? But we tried. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, that's a really cool project to build. Yeah, oh, so Corpus you. Christi yeah, um, uh, ISD has it, and they do underwater competitions and all the full gamut. I want to get it for uh, my school district. Yeah. yeah, while I was in that program, we so were actually the in, in the process of adding cameras right and though. stuff before I left. Oh, and adding cool. uh, maybe right. a little retractable right. plastic arm. Nice. That was the, or servo arm. That was the goal, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, at some point I get to see if they actually did that. Pretty cool. I like the servo arm, like Tom Servo from Mystery Theater 3000, mm -hmm. one of my favorite shows. I feel a little bit like you guys are like mystery science theater in the macro here. I mean, that, you there, get the camera there, behind just all the dark heads in yeah. front of the video screen. There are some frightening um, <laughs> yeah, comparisons. It's a pretty good program. Hopefully one. you can get into it. <laughs> for the oh, uh, for the sea purchase because that would be a really cool a learning experience. So I think, Katie, um, Dan had mm -hmm. me put the multi-beam up on one of those screens. If you look behind your your screen is blocking it, but the yes, dive I've been is watching in that. mouse. Um, but I think there's a now theory we have, that we can uh, kick beams. that off onto the internet. But I think we're just. I would love that if we it. could put that map up there. Sure. And we should know, be I able to do it. However, I am not a video so technician. Daryl, do you think we can oh, send the MB proc, which is on PC1, to satellite feed while three. we're just now uh, seeing one and three at home? Oh, yeah. Well, they could see it on the quad feed. Yeah, it'll just be really small. But, yeah. Send it to, one, up, to can, three. Uh, keep coming down easy. The PC1. Send so MV. PC1. It's on PC1, I think. The input. MV to which monitor? The video is already sent to PC1, so, so you just need to make PC1 Sunday. go to satellite 3. PC as a... Uh, oh, that's what you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah. I was thinking monitor wall. No. I'm saying, yeah. Sat 3? Yeah. Yes, please. To what PC, which one? PC1. PC there you go. It's alive. <laughs> the bit rate is going to be lower as a warning. That's it's okay. hard to read. But there you go. Yep. Okay, you can. Uh, so, for those of you at home, this is the um, so multi beam data here. that we collected over the last uh, 16 hours or so. Um, and you can see the um, 
purplish to uh, green color is the new coverage and the light blue to yellow is the existing coverage that we had in this area so as you can see there's not a ton of coverage um, here so we did some mapping and this orange line is going to be our dive track for today so we're going to make our way up this track and uh, take a look at this side of this seamount so how did you choose this particular dive track uh, I did not choose this particular <laughs> dive track. I just made the line on the map. Um, I work with the expedition leader and our two science leads, as well as anybody else who happens to be um, interested in dive planning um, that's in the data lab at the time. But um, they look at all of the maps that we have, all the data that we have, all the new data that we've collected, the different features and the slopes. Um, and Brian can probably talk to this a little bit more about why and what he picks for a particular dive track. but. Um, some of the things that come in is, you know, there are different depth ranges that they want to collect samples at, and there are um, uh, different slopes, um, angles of slopes that have a better, um, better uh, affinity for seeing corals and things on it. So, anyway, um, so yeah, that's going to be today's dive track, but we're just getting into watch change, so Daryl, we can go ahead and chuck that back to... Um, the regular satellite feed. Yeah, but thank you for explaining that. That's, yeah, no I always try to tell that on interactions, like the mapping section <laughs> is something that we don't really think about because we're so used to having maps in our everyday life, but it's so crucial for out here, getting to know what's on the bottom of the seafloor. True story. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I was laughing because we just flipped it back from this beautiful picture We'll like just, showing uh, our thing, and now it's Dave's head. Yeah, you can talk about <laughs> that if you want. I'll stay on you. But I just so if anybody is wondering, that is Dave. Keep that delta. That so is Dave's head. <laughs> and yes, we are just about to go through a. That's what's dragging you. A watch change, and we are almost to the bottom of the seafloor. So during this next watch, they will get to see all kinds of hopefully amazing things. I'm trying to share the love because this. This watch always gets to see the cool stuff. Ooh, Deb, we do have a question before you go, though. What, yeah, is, the spe uh, what is the spatial resolution on the features? Uh, it's interesting. It's hard to tell um, that question. The grid that, I, that you saw in that image that's the purplish to orange color is a 30-meter grid. So the cell sizes of that grid is 30 meters. Um, so these features are hundreds of meters long um, and a couple hundred meters high. Um, so our dive today is traversing over, um, we're starting at about 2,000 meters and headed up to about 1,300 meters. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, it they're really big features. They look really tiny on the screen, but, um, but they're quite big. But the sonar, um, you know, when we talk about resolution, there's a couple of different um, things that come into play, depth oh, and the type of sonar and the beam angles. Um, and so what we kind of try to do is make a grid that what we can resolve or the best coverage of data for the water depths. And um, okay, especially with ROV diving, we like to have um, around a 30, 40 meter grid um, just to kind of be able to see the features a little bit better. Yeah. If we had an AUV Robert, or something that actually got closer to the C4, you can get a higher resolution or you can resolve smaller features. Um, <laughs> but when we're mapping 2,000 meters down, um, we're not we're not resolving quite as small. So are there AUVs that can map? I mean, yeah. besides Drix, but yeah. I don't, yeah. Video a, Drix is a surface vessel, but so there are lots of different autonomous underwater. AUVs is mm. autonomous underwater vehicle, where ASV is autonomous surface vessel. Um, so Drix works a lot like a ship, ship but on um, the surface. But yeah, so there are um, like a Remus 6000 can go to 6000 meters and um, um, can map pretty deep um, and there are various levels of all um, different size AUVs that um, have different types of sonars on them so um, I didn't realize that, that that technology had advanced that far yet yep man yep. I learned so much every night <laughs> oh. so you have somebody online saying thank you Deb or they just said thanks you're welcome <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, and yes, the video feed is getting worked on from shore. They're troubleshooting it as we speak. So you can look at the quad view and you should be able to see some things. Yes, I know that it's going to be a little bit smaller because you have four screens. Yeah, I do. Thanks. All in one monitor. And Working on it. I think people have said just one and three is down, so you still yeah, have two, two, which is Atalanta's image. Um, but let's be honest. We want to see satellite feed three, where we can see all of us inside <laughs> the control van, back of the heads. No. And bottom in sight. Oh, there's the bottom. Right as we got off watch. Um, FYI, before we leave, World Ocean Day is coming up. June 8th, yes. mark your calendars and watch for Nautilus Live is probably going to do yes, they are. a watch bunch for some, of stuff. Watch for some online TikTok videos, some Instagram posts. Yeah, I think there's a number of things planned over the week. Yes, in fact, Ocean we week. were we were plan already doing some earlier today. Did y'all guys get your quick little interview? I know Chris did. Mm. What interview? No? I did. I okay, did. you did. I'm not, I'm not gonna say though. Mm. I gotta check out TikTok in a couple weeks. Oh no, I was just wondering if you did get uh, a little yeah. interview. I got, yeah. a, I got a little one statement, not an interview, but I made my statement. Testing out the new tiny mic. Tiny mic. Tiny mic. I like to talk tiny. What or what the ocean means to me is. What does mm. the ocean mean to you, Coralie? I don't know yet. Figuring still it figuring out. it out. <laughs> Jerry's still out. It's ever evolving. Ocean is how I'm going to graduate school. <laughs> it's the official sponsor of my PhD. <laughs> the ocean is home to the cool rocks. Yes. <laughs> or maybe, I mean, the ocean wasn't always there, but the, rock, the rocks were always there. Is that like a chicken or the egg con thing? Like, what came first, the ocean or the rock? No, no, we know the answer to that. The one. answer, it's well, the rocks. yeah, it was the rocks. The there's two hypotheses, and one, both of them don't make perfect sense, but one makes more sense than the other one. But it's that like meteor impacts. Oh, gave us. But yeah. the I just deuterium hydrogen rocks. ratio is like still kind of wrong. So yeah. it's not a perfect theory, but it is the best one we have. Yeah. I meant these specific rocks. These rocks yeah. that are made from the ocean? <laughs> yes. All of them. I don't know. Never mind. I was wanting something enigmatic, and you're like, no, we know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to be like, all right, viewers, we can leave you with this conundrum. Yes. What came first? Oh. Yeah, we're trying? handing over to the next watch. Oh, wow. Are you staying on here, Deb? You're like, no, back to the cave you go. Yeah, well, it's nearly bedtime, so. It is nearly bedtime. Yeah. I'm tired. I should not be tired. I got two nights of sleep in a row. I got to have a large iced coffee after lunch, which probably wasn't a good idea, so. Ooh. After lunch? Yeah. I usually don't let myself have coffee after lunch. Oh, because it affects you. Yeah. The coffee ice cream last night definitely affected yes. all of us. Yeah, really got yeah. me. Right, yeah, yeah, same. I could not fall asleep, but it was, I it was do so not regret good. my choices. It was no, so it was good at the moment. It was the best coffee ice cream I've ever had. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. So, question that we just got coming in. What advice would you give someone who is interested in pursuing a career in ocean exploration and research? Um, <laughs> I was like, everybody's like, mm, I don't want to answer that one. <laughs> There's just so many different careers, so it kind of depends, like, what you want to go into. I think if you find a good undergraduate program that has some variety and maybe is a bigger school, I think, is not necessarily always best because sometimes smaller schools let you try a lot of different things. It's a counter, vice versa type thing. Sometimes it's a good, sometimes it's not. But... Um, you know, and that undergraduate will help you kind of um, get some experiences into different realms. You're going to try a little biology, you're going to try some chemistry, you're going to get yeah, exposed yeah. to geology and 
you'll learn a little bit from that if you want to work in the science realm of this what is a focus that you would like and then from there you can decide whether you go into the work field or whether you go into furthering you know higher education degrees what is I can't change anything I can't change any of the settings. Something happened. And now I used to be able to change it from auto to manual. I don't know what's going on. Nope. Maybe I'll try and find Leela. This is way too overexposed. Dan might be able to fix it. He was looking at it with her earlier today, so before he leaves, you might be able to grab him. Okay. No, it's just like none of the, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's, maybe it'll be figured out by the time I come back on watch in 12 hours. Or I guess it's less than that. No. Yeah, in 12 hours. Wait, no. Yes. No. Eight hours. Yeah. And the M's too. Yeah. Yankees. It was. Uh, Here I am. Oop, I put that down and we gotta. Yeah, that's a sea pen. A little shrimp there. Good evening, 8-12. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Dirty. Yeah, it does need to be replaced. Okay, uh, we're going to do a uh, black balance first. And we're back. And then we're going to do a white balance here. Which one, the Jason Momoa Aquaman? <laughs> <laughs> okay, video's good. Video's good. Thank you. See you, Chris. Oh. Okay, oh, it's all settling in. 
Oh, it's going good. We're How are we bottom. feeling? Feeling awesome. Mm. Let's go. 10 of 10. I'm so happy. Where are we going? What are we doing? The Where are we going? Science. Looks like we're going to Waypoint 2. Yep. Right up that little, uh, well, we're going to have to have debate again whether it's a knob or a knoll or a. A knob. Okay. We will head to the knob. Suction off. So. All these off. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by science. <laughs> All right. Okay. Was this, were we getting life advice or is that a <laughs> yes. ROV thing? Uh, okay, we're going to be doing about a 115 and we'll be going, uh, let's see here. We've got, we're a little bit on the base of a slope here and then we'll uh, head up the knob. Fridge nav. Good evening, Bridge. Uh, let's do three zero meters, one one five, please. So science, what are we looking for? Uh, ooh, there's a big sponge in the background there. Found it. We're looking for the characteristic fauna of in this <coughs> depth range, which we haven't really spent much time in on this cruise. So we're kind of hitting the 2,000 to 1,500 meter range here and hoping to see what likes to live here, collect some rocks along the way, find some unusual critters, and and uh, I think pretty excited about some of the steeper slopes we have ahead of us. Great. Can you zoom in, Dave? We have not been on this seamount before. Oh, that's a new Do tele sponge. See this? Yeah. Yeah. That's a Ferraid sponge. Ferraid. A family Faraday. No, thank you. Is that named after? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll try to get Who the is genus. It? Okay, I'm trying to think of the first name of Faraday. Okay. <laughs> Cage Faraday. <laughs> <laughs> named, named one of his kids Michael. Cage. Oh, yeah, I think that's right. Oh, there's something living in there. Ooh, can we zoom? That's it. That's all we got. Okay, that's but fine. Bob can work it in closer, I'm sure. Maybe. It's in yeah. a hole. Uh, chats, yeah, chat says Faraday sponge. I think it's genus uh, Ferrea. F A R R E A. Noted. Thank you. Yep. Well, the sort of the balance on that point here. The organism inside is pink. Ooh. Or peach. I feel like it's a shrimp. I don't know. That's purely a guess. I'm. I would agree with you. That seems logical. It's not. A rhinoceros? No, <laughs> probably not. Just by process of elimination here. We're like two minutes into this watch. Yeah, <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> <but> <laughs> hey, so chat says Michael Faraday? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Michael yep. Faraday, okay. Yep. Yes. Robert came up with that one. Oh, okay. Chat's kind of like a... Uh, like a Google would be like, hey, what's the population of Iowa? <laughs> they kind of are. They know so much. Right? I feel yeah, like they do. the That's chat true. is right, like kind of like God. Yep. It's very impressive. Away. 
the chat is all knowing. There's something else over here. Oh, a similar, hey, yeah. Lila. Variant sponge again. Looks like it's pretty similar. Hold on. One second. <laughs> Maybe not as healthy. Zoom in, Dave. Oh, we have a coral. We have a coral? Uh, uh, I did see a whip coral somewhere. Yeah, I did too. There. This one's looking a little this? sad. Yeah. This is another Freya. I don't know how to pronounce this, but this is what I think it is. Okay, I Turdai have that idea here, no worries. Oka? Oka erecta. O Oka, O-C-C-A. It looks like there might be some sea pens in the background here. Down low or? Um, yeah, to the right-ish. Just in the sediment. Science very interested in generally continuing along rather than letting the ship settle out between moves. Um, or is there anything here that you might want to take a closer zoom on or sample? From here, we've only moved like a... We moved about 30 meters from where we started. The ship or the ROV? Oh. ROVs probably don't move that much. Maybe ten. ten. Is this a coral that we've already seen, or is this new? There was one of these right where we landed. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if we were back in that spot. Um, yeah, I personally like going over this sediment because there's a lot of sea pens that we don't see as we're moving up the seamount. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Would you like to move briskly over the sediment or take our time? Uh, for the first move, let's let's not let's see what we see, and then maybe as once we've been through one move, we can speed it up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we just completed a move. Okay, um, so but let's I'll put in another one. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, right, I don't yeah. need to comb through every sea pen down here, but Copy. I'd love to see <laughs> some. Uh, this let's is Anthoptilum. Three zero meters, one one five, please. Or protoptilum, actually. Can you repeat that real quick? Protoptilum, P R O T O P T I L U M. Okay, noted, thank you. Looks like we have another seed pen down there. There is an umbelula and another parentopath, or, oh my gosh, <laughs> protoptilum. Can we look at them or are we just no team them? Can I get a quick zoom on that tall, skinny one? Zoom in, Dave. is that there's actually a full cucumber inside the burrito. Oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> so awful. I'm so glad we already ate dinner. <laughs> 
I don't know, this does not deter my appetite any. I'm like, those cookies are still sounding really good for have to go an outside. hour for now. Side and take a picture of that sunset. Looks like it might be nice tonight. Yeah, apparently we missed we missed the really, really, really good sunset yesterday. Oh, I went to bed because we had to get up and recover at midnight. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, how Same was the cephalopod? No, you didn't see the cephalopod eggs. I don't want to talk uh, about it. <laughs> okay, so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I heard they looked weird. Oh, I, w I tried I've seen so hard. Before. I wanted to wake up. I've seen them on coral before, yeah. but yeah. I heard they looked weird and someone got scared. I get scared all the time. Scared? Scared. I don't know. They look strange. Yeah. Chris, d I were mean, you able to process look the like little aliens. last night? Yeah, I think that's why. I think they look like boogers. Nope, I went to bed. Okay. <laughs> Brian, did you process? No, I went to bed. Um, <laughs> but I, saw I did hear that, that as we suspected, two of them were just the remnants attached to the, the coral-esque thing, and then mm -hmm. one was still full. And they debated whether they could see some eye-looking structures through the um, the egg case or not. There was mixed reviews on the sampling processing team last night mm -hmm. on whether they could see any structure in it. They took it off the coral and have preserved it, um, and, but didn't open it. And um, Leela and I were discussing whether or not we wanted to cut it open um, on the boat or send it to the send it to the Museum of Comparative Zoology intact and let one of their cephalopod experts cut it open. And we hadn't decided what we were going to do yet. Has it already been put in pre in preservative? Yeah, been it's, fixed? Pre it's it's been fixed in ethanol. Um, yeah, I saw a coral go by as it held the door open for somebody, but I didn't realize there were oh, egg sacs on it. Fun, some fun things on there. It's all and good. we're not even sure it's a coral. We're still debating what actually was growing on. The leading the leading belief is some kind of hydrozoan, but oh, um, okay, then maybe what I saw yeah. go by was not that because that looks, looks like a coral. It looks yeah. like a coral. Oh, okay. It looks like a coral. It looks like a coral, but it's it's we. I'm I'm under the impression it's closer related to a fire coral than like a true coral. Oh. So we went through the dive highlights already today, trying to find a good still cam photo of the little cephalopod eggs. Could not find it. What? Yeah, I'm very disappointed. I took a bunch of pictures of those. So we don't get, okay, so here's the funny thing. We don't get the actual still cam that you see. We get a different camera. Oh. Uh, yeah, it really makes me jealous of your still camera. Because yeah. the still camera photos are amazing. You guys need to get on this lifestyle, the still camera lifestyle. <laughs> How can we? Like, I want to ask Megan that. How do we get those, the still camera photos? Ask Leela, she'll know. But there, it's weird because it's like I'm controlling this computer, which is uh -huh. downstairs, which has like a, it goes into a, the computer on the camera on the ROV, but then this goes to a new data fold. So, like, you'll see here, like, I'll take some pictures on this still cam. Uh -huh. And like they'll go into this folder, but I've you'll seen see you making the folder. You'll see that they'll it goes into another folder. So there's a folder that like periodically will take everything out and put it into a new folder. So I don't know where that folder is, and that's like the folder that it ends up living in. But eventually these will get like all swept into a different folder. See? Yeah. Okay. We, we, we will know. Well, I was going to say, because I started like a mystery for tomorrow. Yeah, well, I started taking, like, I've been writing down some of the pictures that I've been taking that I like, mm -hmm. that I think I might want printed one day. Yeah, because some, like, the, those are some beautiful images. Mm -hmm. And, like, so some of the still cam photos that we're getting on our side, which are not the same still cam as your side, I'm like, I have already airdropped a couple to my Mac, mm -hmm. and we'll like do it at the end where anybody can take those if they want them, and then we're going to turn some of them into photo albums. But yeah, some of them I really want printed. Yeah. They're so beautiful. I mean, some of them will look really cool in MGSL, I think. Um, what is MGSL? Marine Geological Samples Laboratory at URI. Oh, okay. It is one of four NSF-funded rock and core repositories in the United States. Um, that was a beautiful explanation. Yeah. Like, shout out to NSF-funded rock and coral programs. It's like one of the smallest ones, but we're small but mighty. <laughs> Katie, the still cams are in the, the primary data archive structure. 
if you go to the same place, you probably look for oh, the things and just find. What? Um, so is it the main file is, and maybe I shouldn't say this all on there. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Just the data warehouse to data to cruise to raw to s Sony. Okay, so we go to Oh, uh, yeah. So, question Would anybody ever do a saturation dive? What's that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, if I had an excuse, I would totally do it. Absolutely. I'm with you there. I would love to do one. The I would enjoy getting into the technical diving, but I kind of have basically made the line for myself that I won't. It's risky enough. I won't do it for fun, uh -huh. but I would happily do it if I had like a science reason to do it. My question is, do we think that ROVs have replaced the need to do saturation diving? What is saturation oh. diving? <laughs> Oh, let's take that one. So saturation diving is so quick. Quick lesson in hyperbaric um, theory: you go down, you saturate your blood with nitrogen while you're diving, and then you come up. And if you're doing normal recreational scuba diving, you can come straight back to the surface slowly, and you've only incurred enough nitrogen that's gone into the solution in your blood that it can come out slowly enough that you don't get decompression sickness. If you get into decompression diving, you have to take come up slower with incremental breaks to allow the nitrogen to come out of solution in your blood slowly enough. Saturation diving is you just go down and you stay down until mm -hmm. you hit fully saturated, stable state for whatever depth you're in. You get a, a, an equilibrium reaction with the saturation level of nitrogen in your blood and then you just you can stay down for as long as you want. As long as you've got oxygen and a place to eat and stay warm, you can stay at whatever depth indefinitely. How do you and then eat? you have to take as habitats and stuff that they put down, diving bells, things like that, you can climb into and eat at depth, at depth pressure. Um, and then you have to take an extremely long time coming up. Generally, they actually bring you up in a hyperbaric chamber from the depth, put that on the deck of the ship, and then take a couple weeks to slowly bring you back to atmospheric pressure. This is done by militaries and um, oil, field, right? oil field work. Yeah. Yep. But the drawback is if something goes wrong, there's, I mean, it's... There's nothing you There's can do. nothing that they can do. It's a really risky thing to yeah. human life. I'm with you. I really don't think that there's much need for it anymore. However, I know somebody online is going to correct me on that. I mean, I think there's things that we haven't quite figured out with ROVs that we, people still... Still need. Maybe um, need to do. And there, I'm sure, are other other um, activities where with which you need to move a person to something at depth. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But I think we're getting there with vehicles and some of the autonomy of sampling and some of the um, ability to do more dexterous and fine smaller things with vehicles arms and as we get more yeah experience sampling and so if you're online is saying that if you look up diving saturation diving and diving chambers on YouTube they always sound like Alvin and the chipmunks which is in strong juxtaposition against all the extreme tasks that they're doing. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, because they breathe heliox to, for a whole bunch of other complicated reasons. Mm -hmm. um, for the physics, they have an extremely high helium mixture in the atmosphere there, and so they all, your vocal cords resonate at a different frequency. Okay, so I'm gonna take the different approach. I wanna do saturation diving just to sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you any You can accomplish so this with a helium balloon, Coralie. <laughs> <laughs> it's much safer. So when I was doing my NOAA working diver training, um, we got to go on a chamber ride um, at part of the training. So they put six of us in a multi-person chamber and took us down to like 180 feet of pressure or something. Uh, and it was really, really fun because we didn't have to worry about any of the dangers of it where we were just along for the ride and it was all being controlled from outside the hyperbaric chamber and so we were all had serious nitrogen narcosis 
oh. the pressure. I mean, we were still in an air environment, and so we didn't sound, you know, as much like Alvin and Chipmunks because we weren't breathing heliox. We were just under pressurized air, but it, we still had a couple octave higher voices, um, and we were just losing it. As soon as someone spoke, all of us in the chamber just lost our minds, and we just <laughs> giggled our way through the r entire time we were in the chamber. And then clouds form like halfway across the chamber with the humidity <laughs> and the pressure change. It was, it was really a lot of fun. Sounds cool. And very interesting. I think over saturation diving, I would want to go on that airplane that lets you feel zero G. Oh, like, yeah. yes. Zero, like yes, being yes, in yes, space. Yes. Bucket list right there. Yeah. I, I think I would take that over a saturation, saturation. dive. That sounds fun. I would, I would do that too. But I hear it can make you very sick. The of vomit comet. Vomit comet. Yeah. There's yep. a, can I answer yeah. one of these questions? Yes, you can. So there's a question on here. Does everyone know how to swim and does anyone have any insight into learn to swim as an adult? I'd love to go snorkeling and diving. And I think it's a great question. And I would recommend checking out your local YMCA or university. A lot of them, if there's a pool, will do adult swim classes. But I think it's a great opportunity. Not everybody gets to learn to swim as a as kid. As a kid, yeah. And I think getting out into the ocean is really important. And so finding a safe way to do that you know, but you can also go snorkeling with like a life jacket on because yeah. you just need to put your face in the water. So don't not go snorkeling because yeah. you don't know how to swim. So. Frankly, I snorkel with a, a snorkel vest because it's just easier. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot easier. Um, but I, I also know multiple career professional mariners that can't swim. And yes. have spent their entire lives on ships uh, and have never learned to swim is not actually that uncommon. There is an SCF who's coming out later this season. I don't want to say who they are, but they can't swim. But they still go out snorkeling and still try to go out kayaking. So they do the yeah. same thing. They hold on to like a little buoy and then they'll snorkel around. Yeah. yeah, I love it. There's ways to get in the water and be in this environment without knowing how to swim. Mm -hmm. My, uh, my PhD advisor idea. liked to make fun of deep sea work, saying that we don't actually work in the water, we work on the water. And she mm -hmm. was a shallow water <laughs> coral biologist and so you know, we'd talk about going out to sea on my kind of ex these type of expeditions, and she'd often make fun of me that I wasn't a real marine biologist because I just sat in front of computer screens all day. <laughs> I definitely think, like, all of us want to go jump off the back of the boat, go swimming, and then seeing all the white tips constantly swimming I've around. Never, I've never really wanted, I'm going to be honest, I've never wanted to <laughs> jump off. I mean, it does get very warm, but yeah, uh -huh. like, just knowing, I don't know what's out there. Uh, you don't know what's at the some beach white either. I know, but like here, like I know that it's like I don't know what's out there, but I do know that there's like sharks. <laughs> there's also sharks at the beach. <laughs> I know, but it's different. I've been out. I've been out in open blue water like this twice in the water, and yeah. it is an amazing experience. Yeah, I've done I it once. Agree. Um, yeah. I, okay, uh, fine. I'll do it. Okay, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll jump off. You gotta the get boat. the. <laughs> If you get the opportunity, you should take it. Definitely not here, though. No. Well, you can still do it safely here. You just don't sit all day with the RV in the water and aggregate all the sharks around us and then jump in. But yeah. if we were to steam somewhere at, at speed and then kind of stop, it'd be relatively safe. And white, don't get me wrong, oceanic white tips are a species of shark that deserve a lot of respect, more than the average shark. But... I, I still know plenty of people who have been in the water with them perfectly safely. Um, they're just a species you really have to keep your eye on. Hmm. What what do they, I don't know. There's just not a lot of food out here. So they're, they're very opportunistic and uh -oh. they are, they have a very varied diet. Um, and so. Yeah, I wouldn't take a long swim out here. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't take a very long swim. I certainly wouldn't swim out here if the ship had been sitting stationary for a long time. Nope. Um, Things that's one of the interesting things we don't fully understand why, but any kind of floating object on the surface out in the open water aggregates fish of all kinds of different species. Haven't you watched Nebo? <laughs> <laughs> that's been a long time. Uh, July 14th, Shark Awareness Day. <laughs> I think we'll be home. I think that's